Hello viewers, once again you're watching The New International. We've come here again to the internationalist commune of Rojava, where we're going to follow the life of a woman international revolutionary. Dembash Tomashevan Hejar. Jarakadin Bername, the new international, the Peshperuene. Jarakadin Amhatin Komina International Yorojava, Umejiana Internationaliste Kijin, Bishopene. And when did you arrive here in Rojava? Uh, so I arrived about a month ago. Wow, so you're very new here. Yes. How is it compared to what you expected? Oh, uh, well, I think there's a bit of differences from what I expected, but uh, I try to know the maximum I can before coming here. And to be honest, I think like it's very different than what the, the people around me expected, but for me, it's quite the same. I mean, like, we are not in the middle of a desert, uh, and so, and people are lovely, and it's, uh, yes, a great place. Um, and why, did, so why did you decide, like, the most famous thing about Rojava outside? Normally it's Yepege and Yepege, and some people come here, like, to fight, but why did you decide to come to a civilian structure? Uh, I think we have a lot to learn from the people here, from the society. And it's the same thing in Europe. I come from France, and so we need to get closer to our people everywhere. And I really think that with this, we are living in a globalized world, so if we are like, uh, capitalism is global, so I mean, we, we are internationalists too, we need to learn from other society in the world and then come back with this knowledge and try how you know we can build uh, the relationships with, I mean, people abroad and how they do. Do you have an example of like a relationship you've made here or something you've learned here from someone from a different place? I think like, Everybody have really different stories, and some are uh, really interesting to know. You know, as a woman, especially, you know the the way to come here. Uh, even in your mind, the moment you decide to do it, the moment where you uh, you feel strong enough to travel by your own. I think I have been touched by this this kind of stories. What's about like a bit your story in terms of were you like politically organized before you came here? Oh, uh, so I organized mostly on the social movements in France because uh, I've been a student for a lot of years and so I think uh, I, I learned uh, all these political ideas on my campus actually and so I organized with other students. For example, how did you organize? Mm. So, uh, for example, I have been part of uh, student unions, and so the point is like uh, helping, uh, helping other students to 
I mean, when they have problems at the university and so with the administration, and then me, I study law. Mm -hmm. So it means that I also work in all these legal issues, like uh, a bit with the, the refugees, especially stu refugee students, and then with the, the people that have like, that needs legal advices, but that don't have like enough money. And so at the university, I was in a, in a group uh, on that topic, for example. And of course, now we are here in a very different conte context. Uh, what do you think you can learn from Rojava that will be useful for you in France? So, what is interesting, the first thing is uh, about uh, the co democratic confederalism. It's difficult to say it in English. <laughs> it's close to French, but it's really different accent. So, it's uh, how you know people can get together organized by themselves and fulfill their needs without anybody else putting pressure on them. It's the same thing, for example, from the women's liberation movements. I think like we have, I can learn how, how they organize, basically. And uh, further from that, collective living here is, uh, I mean, I learn a lot of things of it, from it. And the other thing is um, uh, the history of this place, because we don't know much, I mean, in Europe, about how people are writing their own history, and to do that, you have to come here. Okay, that's some good aims. <laughs> Thank you.
Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 esta mañana me he levantado y he descubierto a Limba. So, hello, uh, love. Uh, what are we doing now? So, it, we are just after lunch and we are playing volleyball because we have free time, I mean, to play sport, to hang around. So what's your like normal daily routine like at the moment? So at the moment we are in education, whoa! <laughs> Which means that uh, we are in class most of, most of the day. So we wake up at 5.45 and then we do sports. Uh, after that we took breakfast, we take breakfast with everybody and then we we have yes lessons until lunch until 12 and after that at 2 from 5 again we have lessons and then we have evening program we do take meal we watch film we have discussions with i mean you take time to discuss and know the people because it's also part i mean of the life here is like spending times together and how do you find the routine here like it's very busy or you find time to relax yeah uh, we, fi we find time to relax a little bit, to be honest, because we are in education. So for the moment, we don't have a lot of free time. So it's pretty busy, but it's also busy because we are always things to do. Like, I don't know, we, we discuss, we have to write something, we have to organize a seminar for the evening program. So, yes. So one of the criticisms I heard here from Kurdish people to internationals is that, like, we don't know how to spend time together. Like, we always have to be doing work or we're just off by ourselves. Do you think it's true? Yeah, I think that it's typically coming from, wow. <laughs> so it's it's coming from, you know, uh, from our way of living in Europe too. It's like, it's true that taking time just to do nothing. We say we do nothing, but it's not doing nothing with your comrades and discussing, taking the times, having to drink a chai, for example, because we always think that, oh, everything that I do should be useful, you know, every everything uh, every move that i have in a day uh, must uh, mean something but sometimes the meaning is not when you are like always super busy so maybe it's true and it's just become we we came here and so yes <laughs> what about what's been like the most special moment for you since you came here to the commune uh, okay so the special moment i had yeah, uh, I think since I've been here, uh, I mean, my Kurdish for the moment is not enough, but we visited families and so we, we discussed with them how they live, uh, especially his family that have like shahids uh, here, which means that pe people from the family that they, they fell against uh, the fascism. Uh, and so discussing with them, sharing sharing this was very deep i think like also we participated to commemorations at the shahid league here uh it was also a, a great time i think but it's only the beginning for me and how are your volleyball skills going oh, la, la. <laughs> i hope it will improve by itself you know <laughs> like because it's uh, i haven't signed for that i didn't know nobody told me for the volleyball but yeah i do my best i think we're a bit in danger of being struck by the ball there so let's uh, close it let's go So now we meet the most important members of the commune. <laughs> Who are these? Yes, so uh, this is the puppies. Uh, I am with Zaytun. And so there are three of, uh, of them here. And we have, we have two dogs here in the commune. And so Luna just have like this, this little dogs uh, um, about a month, m more than a month ago. So I think for Kurdish people, it can be a bit strange to see people like holding the dogs, stroking them, giving them names. Why do you keep this dog set? 
oh, okay, so we are living with them. I mean, like they are kind of protecting the camp. And uh, so, I mean, uh, we can be like, uh, how can I say that? Maybe it's something, it can be something strange because we are used to do that. Mm. I mean, to be close like to dogs or even cats mm. in Europe. And so <laughs> we keep this, we keep the, kept this habit here, but uh, it's just, we don't consider them like as uh, human. Mm. I mean, but of course, I mean, like it's, it's important, but it, uh, I think like to have this cooperation with animals mm. here, they are part of our environment. <laughs> Where were you living in France? You were living in a city? Or? Yeah, so I grew up in Bordeaux, it's in the south, but then uh, I studied there and then I moved to uh, Rennes, which is like in the French, French Brittany. Mm. Yes. And so how do you find now, like living here in this village, kind of very small village in the middle of nowhere? Yes, so uh, I think that it's like peaceful. <laughs> it's peaceful being here. We are, I think like the time is completely different. First, when I arrived, I was like a bit, whew, I don't know what time is it. It doesn't really matter to be what day we are. We just, we follow a rhythm that is like, uh, I don't know, more close to human being. Mm. Mm. Yes. And uh, what do you find hard about living here compared to Europe? Oh, for the moment, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> I'm a bit tired because I have to adapt uh, to the place. But after that, you know, it's not that difficult. And it's raining a, a lot these days. It reminds me home. <laughs> I know it will not be like this, like this summer, but for the moment, it's like, <laughs> yes, it's, it's not that, uh, that different on these points. No, it's just like the language, maybe the frustration of not being capable of discussing with people and for the moment, yes. Unless with internationals, we can. <laughs> but of course, you will then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Heva, what are you doing here? Yes, yeah, so we are doing our daily take meal, um, which means we are coming together with our commune. So, because we are living uh, most of the time with our commune, which is like at least four to seven people. Uh, and so, the take meal is the moment of the day where we are coming together and discussing what happened during the day. Uh, which criticism we have, self-criticism, and then we will do like a, a biggest take meal with everybody every two or three, four days to discuss about this communal life. Yes. And what's the benefit? Like, what do you get from doing this? I think there's uh, many different aspects. The first one is like, uh, you know, it's 
allow all the, the tension that can happen in the group to come out. And so we can solve the conflicts, but it's also to improve our way of living together because, yes, I mean, it's a work, it's an every, an everyday work, but it's also, you know, to be true with your comrades. And uh, like to say, this is a space for tech meal. When you give a critique to someone, then it will not happen again. And so you have a space to say the things without being rude, but being like direct. Yes. Can you give an example of like a, a problem you had in the commune, which got solved by Techno? Yes, I mean like it's small problems that we have here. So it can be bigger issue that, for example, like uh, how we organize, how we share the space, for example. And so uh, when you are tired with your, you know, you are tired, you have to organize the space for everyone and it can be like tensions about that. But if you discuss it or if you discuss who is like cleaning the bathroom, you discuss it once and then it's okay. You will not like think about it every morning and being angry because you say it's me again washing that. <laughs> and uh, like, how do you find it here to organize autonomously as women? Like, how does it work? What is the benefit? So that's that's really interesting because at first sight i was like why and i had a lot of questions about it but i think it's important first to come as a group of women because i think that in this revolution like women are the avant-garde and so we have to learn how to be together and it's something that we haven't learned learned with the patriarchy you know most of the time we are told by the society that we should be in competition with each other that uh, yes uh, we we have we have this way of behaving with each other like being bad and so organizing give us more strength and like apart from tech mail like how do you work together as women how do you spend time together so there is the collective life i mean it's all about cooking washing dishes uh, but so sleeping together but it's also discussing politics I have like seminar autonomously most of the time yes it that's it <laughs> How do you see the difference between, for example, a, a like autonomous seminar and a seminar with men and women together? Uh, I mean, like uh, the one of the aim is that everybody can express herself also in this kind of seminar. And sometimes, you know, it's good to have time between women to share what we want to say then to the men. And it's not like one or two women that are able to, to discuss about the problems or to discuss about patriarchy, but it's about everybody can say something and we have one voice in the end and so and sometimes yes we have issues that concerns us so if we we can share in this space but it's not that different uh what do you think like women's movements in the west can learn from this women's movement so i think that the idea is that we don't share only problems we also share common goals, a common way of organizing with each other. And maybe it's something interesting that I am learning here. And I think we can come more, more together. And without, I said it before, without this idea of individualism and competition in every aspect of our lives. <laughs> Fossa, and 
Great pleasure, Tere. Uh, what are you working on now? So today we are writing a kind of a, a report, a document. And so this document is about discussing uh, our personality here, who we are, what are we doing, what are our, our goal here, how we get into Rojava, I mean, mm. <laughs> all this. So what kind of things are you writing? So me, I'm talking about how I got here, uh, what I think political things are important to me. Uh, For example? Yes, <laughs> oh, like that's a very, very huge topic. But so uh, first of all, it's, it's discussing like what we learn in Europe, what we are learning here, and I mean what we can criticize in it, what we can do for the future about it. Yes. Uh, how do you find? So you studied for a long time in Europe. Yeah. You went to university and studied law. How do you find the difference between? how you studied in Europe and education here? Oh, it's, it's totally different. Also because like uh, the, the, the word per <laughs> mm. <laughs> sorry for my accent to my Kurdish comrades, <laughs> uh, it's also about teaching and learning in the same time. So there is not like this uh, hierarchy that you can find uh, at the university, even if it's not everywhere. I mean, it's for really in my university, it's like someone have a knowledge and he give it to you like this, like it's a block and you have just to learn it and that's it. And here it's more about like everything, everything you do, you can criticize it. And so everything you do, you can uh, share your experiments, like it's more discussions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sharing knowledge and discussions. This is different. So yeah, can you maybe give an example of in this two weeks of education so far, like a really good discussion or a time when you were like learning together? Yes. Uh, for example, uh, we had like this time when we sh we discussed like the history of Middle East, mm -hmm. and so we talked about the representation we have about this place, and so but we have done that also with each other. This was a really good moment, but also the moments where we also discuss like we confront different point of view. Mm -hmm. I mean, like what uh, what we know about. Uh, how the state is working, for example, and so there is like debates, we debate on the words, for example, mm -hmm. what words means, what, you know, how the, the, the meaning of a word have been taken by the state, for example, to change it. And so this creates like really, I mean, living discussions. Mm -hmm. yes. And there are quite different like political perspectives inside the group? Mm, yes, I mean, like we are all like revolutionaries. And so, but we have different backgrounds, of course. And it also depends on the country where you come from. It's like, it's influenced us so much. You know, for example, maybe like uh, how I see it or how I learn it, like uh, this uh, organizing uh, democratic modernity here uh, in Rojava uh, is maybe more natural because the people, they have their way to organize with mm -hmm. their neighbors, for example. But it's different when you are in Europe and so, the way of organizing is different. So yes, this shapes our political background, I think. But in the same, in the, in at least we are more or less all in this have the same purpose. Because mm. yeah, you've talked a bit about the benefit, like that we come here to learn from the Kurdish society, Kurdish movement. But is there also a benefit in coming here and being with people from many different countries in the commune? Yes, of course, because it's also a place where we can connect to each other. And the thing is that here we don't have uh, the necessity, you know, like to work uh, or to have a part time job when you are not well being paid and you have a boss saying like that you have to work all this time a day. And so you don't have the time to do politics here. We have like 100 percent of our time to do politics, to discuss and to organize with each other. So, of course, the connection is also in between all the, the people that are coming from all the parts of the world here in this commune. Mm. For me, when I first came here, it was something also was really good, but also quite hard mm. to feel like this 24 hours in discussion and trying to improve yourself and feeling a bit like suffocated. Do you know what I mean? 
Yes, I think I know what you mean, especially because uh, at first I was like, oh, I have no time for myself and I need to get back to a bubble, you know, or something like that. And this is discussion that we have like, uh, like uh, often in tech mills, for example. But I think it's good, like it's not about like crushing individuals and being all the same, but it's like uh, you have to find a space, but we, and being being with each other and after sometimes it's just become natural you mm -hmm. know like i remember when i was living alone in a really tiny apartment in paris and i was i was alone it was not that good too so no. maybe i had all the time you know to think and to do exactly what i want every minute but when you organize you also do like compromises in your everyday mm -hmm. life maybe it's like small sometimes like okay i let you this space okay it's your turn to have uh, you know a warm shower? <laughs> so I said that it's precious, you know. Like, but then all these things that are actual, like that things that you can touch in your daily life, you can have them with other people. So first you learn to share it, and then you will find space for for your own a, a little bit too. But yeah, I mm -hmm. agree. <laughs> What I see is that there is a change in the way we behave with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think there's really a will of being like better person. Maybe it's it's a bit naive seeing it like that, but it's also about just being human and not mm -hmm. and not just uh, trying to be like the best in a group, but it's like what we learn about, okay, if we come together, it would work. It's totally about that. And we see it like if someone is not uh, participating or if someone is sick, you know, all the group, will it will affect everybody. So everybody will have to take care of each other. <laughs> So, Valazila, the big news in Rojava lately is that ISIS was finally defeated. Um, and, like, the reason in the beginning why so many internationalists started to come here often was to fight against ISIS. Why did you decide to come now? I mean, like, uh, the end of uh, Daesh versus, like, I mean, it's officially, but Daesh still, like, everywhere and the other thing is that most importantly like this uh, region here is under threat today is under threat because like all the imperialist countries they want to come here now and they want you know they want they want to sh to to distribute to share the resources and uh, the power for themselves against the people in the society that is living here so i think that the revolution that is happening here right now that we are actually living like a direct communism collective living is beginning now. I mean, this work began like a few years ago because it's not only about war. It's only like, it's not the war, like physical war. It's also the war in your mind. And so this is right now that we have to build it. And so it's, it's just, I think it's just the beginning mm. of it. So what do you think, like, in this time of the war against ISIS, Rojava somehow got a lot of support from like nation states, from the West, from like a liberal people. What do you think will happen now? Will that support vanish? <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I can say. I can say it for uh, for them. You know. I can't say. But what I know is that at any time of our history, the history have been made not by the power, not by just the state. The history have been made by millions of people. You know, ju not just one or two politicians or one or two like. I don't know, head of big companies. So we will make the history right now. And so we have to organize to be the one that will decide uh, what will be the next, the, what will be the future here and also in our world. So of course the project, I mean, the political project here is very far away from the understanding of how humanity should live by the big power that we are facing right now. But I mean, they can't avoid us. They can't, uh, you you know, blind their eyes now, we are we are here. But what they will do, I mean, like, we don't really know. They will put pressure, for sure. 
And how do you feel to be here, like, taking your part in this uh, revolution, which, like you say, is so opposed to the political program in the West? I think, like, uh, being internationalist, as we said before, is kind of a duty right now. So we are living in this world where everything is connected. And so our life in Europe is totally connected, you know, with here in the Middle East, with, I don't know, the gas situation. Without gas, Europe, you know, capitalism can be sustainable. It's one example, but I can give some others. Like, the situation here is crucial, uh, so because... Uh, this place is always colonized, this place is always, uh, there is always war here. So it means that there is something that we have to do. And as internationalists, our role is not, I mean, I will make the difference, but we will make the, the difference by our better understanding of what's going on. And so, I mean, for those people who told me like, yes, but there is no war in Europe and it's really far away. And so why are you going in a war zone? I want to say, it's untrue. Like the war is everywhere, and so the system we're living in can't be like can be forever. So it means that we have to go where people think what's next. When you were living in Europe, did how did you feel? Kind of like personally, this like attacks on us as revolutionaries, as people trying to live in a different way. Of course, because like I mean, it depends on who you are talking about, but. In Europe, like the proletarian, like the refugees, women, all the minorities are attacked all the time. And those who say like, uh, I mean, it's quite different. I can't compare anything, you know, uh, I can say like, uh, I, I mean, like anything is not as fascist as we can see in other parts of the world. But I mean, like the fascists grew up in Europe and so in other parts of the world and it means like the mechanism is the same like capitalism is so deep in ourselves in Europe that maybe we can't see it but it's like it's I mean like it's as dangerous as it is everywhere else and so uh, yes of course I think that the political situation in Europe with all you know the reactionary people coming at power all the law that are against society uh, happening right now have something to do with with what is happening here and do you have like a message for people in Europe maybe especially women in Europe yes I think especially for the the women uh, uh, we also are the future of deep revolutions. Uh, as I said, we have to come, I mean, with more unity. And my message is like, okay, so we are not a lot coming here for to Rojava uh, as internationalist women because we are facing like so many pressures. The first one, the the family, because family is a small state, you know, as uh, Seokat said. The, the second thing is like pressure from the society to be like the perfect person to work, to behave in a certain way. So we have everything to win in this revolution. And so coming here is, a, is the best occasion that we can have to, to see that we can do things differently with the example of the women here, that we can organize coming back and continue our struggle together. Abiji. Esta mañana me he levantado Oh, bella chao, bella chao, bella chao, chao, chao Esta mañana me he levantado y he descubierto al invasor Oh, partillano me voy contigo Oh, bella chao, bella chao, bella chao, chao, chao Partillano, me voy contigo Porque me siento aquí morir Y si yo caigo en la guerrilla Oh, bella chao, bella chao, bella chao, chao, chao Si yo caigo en la guerrilla, te dejaré mi fusil. Cava una fosa en la montaña. Bella chao, bella chao, bella chao. Cava una fosa en la montaña.
friend that loves facts. You know, like this kind of friend that loves facts. Okay, Eva. So we come now to the end of our show. Thank you for passing your day with us. And to finish, we have lit this beautiful, spontaneous fire. Um, and you had a poem you were going to share with us. Yes. Uh, so I read you now a poem and then I will explain it because it's in French. Okay. Okay. So the name of the poem is uh, Ce Coeur qui haïssait la guerre. And it's from uh, Robert Desnos. So can I take it? Ce cœur qui haïssait la guerre, voilà qu'il se bat pour le combat et la bataille. Ce cœur qui ne battait qu'au rythme des marées, à celui des saisons, à celui des, jours, à celui des heures du jour et de la nuit, voilà qu'il se gonfle et qu'il envoie dans les veines un sang brûlant de salpêtre et de haine, et qu'il mène un tel bruit dans la cervelle que les oreilles en sifflent, et qu'il n'est pas possible que ce bruit ne se répande pas dans la ville et la campagne. Comme le son d'une cloche appelant à l'émeute et au combat, écoutez, je l'entends qui me revient par d'autres échos. Mais non, c'est le bruit d'autres cœurs, de millions d'autres cœurs battant comme le mien à travers la France. Ils battent au même rythme, par la même besogne tous ces cœurs. Leur bruit est celui de la mer à l'assaut des falaises. Et tout ce sang porte dans des millions de cervelles un même mot d'ordre, révolte contre Hitler et mort à ses partisans. Pourtant, ce cœur a hissé la guerre et se battait au rythme des saisons. Mais un seul mot, liberté, a suffi à réveiller les vieilles colères. Et des millions de Français se préparent dans l'ombre à la besogne que l'aube proche leur imposera. Car ces cœurs qui haïssaient la guerre battaient pour la liberté, au rythme même des saisons et des marées, du jour et de la nuit. Thank you. So I understood the word partisan, otherwise not a lot. Um, can you explain what it's about? Yes. So, uh, ce cœur qui haïssait la guerre, uh, you can translate it in English by this heart which uh, hates the war. But, and so Robert Desnos, Uh, was a resistance during the Second World War, but he was also like a, a poet in the surrealist movement. And then he died in a concentration camp, but, uh, but ju just before the liberation. Uh, and so he wrote a lot. Uh, he wrote this poem in a resistance newspaper. And so this poem says like, we hate the war, but now and so our heart were like only living with you know the seasons the reason of the sea but now uh, we have just one one word like freedom mm -hmm. um with free, free freedom so we'll organize to reach the i mean to reach the to go to war and to fight like uh, so hitler i mean like to fight to fight fascism and so i think that this poem is like even if it talks about history the way it's made is really reflects how times mm -hmm. and yes so uh, this like poem written by this guy who in the end fell shaheed in a concentration camp in the second world war like how does that connect to you to what we're doing here today I mean, like, uh, because we continued this work as internationalists, like, to fight fascism everywhere, uh, everywhere we, we can, as the Kurdish people are doing it here, like, uh, with the blood of their shade for their land. And so I think, like, it's, it's meaningful in this way, because I see in what he's saying, uh, I see the struggle here. And so it means that we are not f too far away from each other. Thank you, Eva. Shahid Namrin. So viewers, today on The New International, we followed the life of Hevel Zelal, an internationalist revolutionary from France. Until the next program, goodbye. Bele Tomshavan Hajar, Euro Bibername, The New International, Mejiana Shoreshkaria International, Binava Hevel Zelal, J. France Chopand. Et Bername Edin, Galex Pass, Sakef Timbe, Ubechatoriwe. Ciao, 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 esta mañana me levanto.
cantado y he descubierto a 